For over a hundred years, internal radiography has been an indispensable tool for endodontic diagnosis and treatment planning, and still it remains a core feature of modern root canal procedures. We know that X-radiation is an excess is obviously harmful. However, with the advent of modern radiography of digital sensors as well as phosphor plates, we have been able to reduce exposure to one-tenth or even less that of the old techniques. And as a result, digital radiography has helped cut down the radiation while also producing the higher quality as well as more efficiency for our radiography needs. All right, let's just face the facts over here. We need radiographs in order to make correct diagnosis and treatment planning decisions. We don't take radiographs just for fun, but we take them because we actually need them. So, how many radiographs or x-rays are needed for a proper root canal procedure? Well, the correct answer really should be that we should take as many x-rays as we truly need in order to render a safe and effective endodontic treatment for our patients, and that we should not really compromise when it comes to obtaining vital diagnostic information and risk mitigating measures during the treatment. But what is the minimum required is probably what this question is asking. Well, I think that something probably between five to six radiographs throughout the case may be the minimum required to do a predictable root canal procedure. And here is why. In my opinion, and also the opinion of the Board of Endodontics, you do need at least two to three preoperative radiographs, a minimum of one to two mid-operative radiographs, and at least one post-operative image. And lastly, you need the most important radiograph of all, the post-operative follow-up image, which happens a few months after the procedure is done and confirms both case healing as well as the restoration of the treated tooth. Of course, this number can increase as I'm obviously assuming here that each attempt will actually result into a quality diagnostic image and we all know what cone cuts are. Okay, here is the breakdown for this number that I just mentioned. For the pre-op shots, three angles are really uh, helpful. A straight periapical, a 15 degree mesial or distal angle periapical, and last but not least, a bite wing that really help us understand the quality of the margin and a less distorted view of the depth of the pulp chamber and furcal floor. Many dentists simply take a single straight shot and call it a day, but they don't really realize that there is a lot of diagnostic information available when combining a straight shot with an angled radiograph that comes handy during treatment. For example, you can find if additional roots may be present or any additional curves at the apex that would be hidden in one angle but could become visible in the other. White wing radiographs are also critical and give you a wealth of information. In fact, if you want to skip one of these three preoperative shots, you might be able to get away without the angled radiograph, but try to always take the bite wing because it's really important. It gives you information about how to prepare and also how to angle your access burrs and also your cavity preparation and how deep you have to go before you stop and take another x-ray. Many times, teeth that appear calcified in the periapical shot show up with some level of chamber or root canal anatomy in the uh, bite wing radiograph. The bite wing also helps you evaluate the restorability of the tooth and how much biological width you have left. It also lets you know if you should even bother saving the tooth in question and whether crown lengthening or extrusion is likely required uh, before or after doing the endo. You can sometimes see the quality of the restoration seal and whether coronal leakage is present in the tooth that you're going to be working on. Keep in mind that faulty coronal restoration should be replaced either before or shortly after the endodontic therapy. Otherwise, if coronal leakage continues after your root canal is done, the two cents of donic prognosis will be significantly lowered as a result of recontamination. During the treatment, taking a file shot is also very important. In fact, I think it's critical. Many people trust their apex locator and believe that the working length determination information that they get from it is enough to get by. 
While the latest generation Apex locators are highly accurate, you have to realize that the file shot gives you more information than just root length. It gives you information that's very valuable about the root shape. What is the diameter at the apex? And are there or are there not any sharp apical curvatures? This information is very important for your master apical file. Most of the time, your file shot will help you decide uh, approximately what size master apical file you should use in order to finish your preparation. For example, if you have a very sharp and short radius curvature, you probably will not instrument that type of a tooth to a very large size diameter, right? I mean, that's just basic common sense. So this information can be very helpful and it can only be obtained from that file shot. The file shot also helps you if there are any additional roots present when your file appears not to be centered in the root canal. For example, if there is an MB2 present or not. Lastly, the file shot can also uh, tell you if two canals can join in, in this particular case um, when you put two files in there. When canals join, it's also important to instrument the straighter canal to the apex and instrument the other canal only up to the point of junction. Otherwise, the file that joins can potentially get uh, over torqued around that you know, short radius curvature and can potentially break at that junction. Of course, additional radiographs during the treatment may be required in these kinds of cases and they can be helpful. During the axis cavity preparation, for example, additional bite wings can reorient you when you can find the canal or when you have calcified canals that are present after your initial access has already been made. And also multiple files and cone shots in separate canals can also improve your accuracy of instrumentation and obturation. Of course, additional radiographs during the treatment may be required and can also be very helpful. During the access preparation, for example, additional bite wings can reorient you to find the calcified canals after initial access has been made and multiple files and cone shots in separate canals can always improve your accuracy of instrumentation and obturation. I also want to say here that CBCT technology has helped improve, obviously, our diagnostic ability greatly. There's no question about that. We can now take a CBCT image preoperatively with very little radiation that can also give us lots of information about the two and three dimensional anatomy of the tooth and the root canals and have that information before we start the procedure. However, CBCTs are not accessible to everyone around the world and are also not an alternative to good quality periapical radiographs in all cases, but are excellent and, in my opinion, necessary adjuncts, especially for molars, if not in all teeth. And last but not least, remember that a patient who refuses to submit to radiography is not an excuse for skipping necessary radiographs. Patients may have all kinds of irrational fears uh, on the step of the procedure based on something that they may have heard or read somewhere on the internet or some holistic doctor's word of mouth. As I mentioned uh, in a recent video, even the lead apron placement on patients is no longer recommended by the ADA's latest recommendations as x-rays and radiography in this kind of digital setting have been found to be extremely safe without any kind of scatter. Ultimately, the outcome of the case is your medical legal responsibility. Providing poor quality treatment as a result of skipping important diagnostic radiographs that helps you do the best treatment that you can render may result in negligence with all kinds of legal consequences. When that happens, the provider is held responsible for choosing to render care below the standard of care. And the very same patients who requested less x-rays will not stand by you and support your decision in the court of law by simply stating, well, I didn't know any better. Okay, yeah. Don't forget that you are ultimately responsible for the care and safety of your patients and that surgery is not a menu item where they get to pick and choose what they want to have done. Take as many x-rays as it takes to do a quality root canal procedure, both safely and predictably, and not a single more. All right, well, I'm Ali Nase, and I hope this information was helpful to you. If you did like it, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.